Hello and welcome everybody. This pure dexterity, no spells or incantations build lets you switch on the fly between lightning infused ranged and melee combat that puts Thor the god of thunder to shame and is great fun to play. If you enjoy this or any of my other builds then liking, subscribing or commenting would immensely support this channel but let's dive right into it. The main idea was to create a simple to execute but still versatile build that can adapt instantly to any situation with a simple weapon swap. Featuring a fast melee weapon with good reach and high attack rating and a strong but cheap and spammable ranged option that kills most standard enemies instantly. You can also switch to some super powerful dexterity weapons for specific fights if you want to. And most enemies will never see you before they die or have to deal with your phantom projection. For an extremely FP efficient ranged option I use the sacrificial axe that you can obtain very early in the game. By the way you can find all wiki links with locations to the weapons, skills and armor I use in this build in the video description. The axe refunds 4 FP with every kill and the Ash of War we are using here is Thunderbolt, which has good reach and scales purely with dexterity and weapon level. You could either use this weapon in your offhand or in your main hand. I prefer to switch weapons rather than two-handing your offhand, because we don't really need the FP refund on our other skill, but that is completely up to you. The weapon of choice for melee combat is the Guardian Sword Spear, which, despite being a halberd, has a very fast moveset, decent reach and a very high attack rating. It also scales extremely well with dexterity, but the keen affinity is slightly outperformed by the lightning affinity when the lightning scorpion charm is used. You could set it to keen and use a weapon grease, but that buff will expire once you switch between weapons, which is something I do often with this setup. The Ash of War I'm using on this weapon is Phantom Slash, one of my favorite weapon skills. It has low FP costs and can be initiated before an enemy reaches you, thus enabling you to place up to 4 hard hits on your target. Most enemies flinch when they get hit by your Phantom Projection, giving you the opportunity to execute the follow-up attack. Once in close range you can switch to the excellent and fast moveset of your Guardian Sword Spear or roll back and follow up with another Phantom Slash. The first hit of your projection is always independent from your weapon damage and scales only with dexterity and weapon level. But the second hit from yourself takes also your weapon attack rating into account. This makes the Guardian Sword Spear superior to something like the Cross Naginata, which I would have loved to use for this build. But a small bleed build up is not worth the damage penalty to your Phantom Slash and standard attacks. And while the moveset of the Cross Naginata is also really nice, the Guardian Sword Spear is just as fast and provides similar reach. The stats of this build are also set up to allow for the use of the Bolt of Grand Sex and the Dragon's King Crackblade. So you could switch to a completely ranged setup that executes everything from miles away or the very cool Thundercloud form skill that I really love and fits this build theme perfectly. But it is also a rather situational Ash of War. If you don't want to deal with an annoying boss toe to toe or simply want to vary your playstyle then go for these very strong options. So how this plays out is that with the basic setup you can just eliminate standard enemies with Thunderbolt from afar for 6 FP or soften up tougher targets before finishing them off with Phantom Slash. And in close quarter combat the fast and hard hitting Sword Spear shines as a fantastic weapon. Around level 100 and well into the mid game you can make this build work. But the Ash of War Phantom Bolt and the Sanctified Wetblade are both obtained in the capital city and Phantom Slash from the Black Knight right after it. Making it more a late game and NG plus build. An early game alternative for Phantom Slash is Sword Dance that you can obtain easily. Because we are only utilizing one damage set you have plenty of room for some extra points in Vigor, Endurance and Mind. At level 150 stats are as follows. Vigor at 50. Depending if you are leaning more into the ranged options or prefer melee combat, you might trade some damage, so 50 Vigor is nice to have. Mind at 22 grants you plenty of FP to use the Ashes of Wars freely and summon the strongest Spirit Ashes. 
Endurance at 32 enables you to wear a heavy armor with good protection and high poise. 20 Strength to give you access to the Bolt of Grandsex and the Dragon's King Crackblade, which add more variety and flexibility to your build. And 80 Dexterity for maximum damage. You don't need any Faith, Intelligence or Arcane in this build. For Talismans I use the Lightning Scorpion Charm to increase lightning damage by 10%. The Shard of Alexander for plus 15% Ash of War damage and the Ritual Sword Talisman to boost your overall damage. Usually I go with the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman for the last slot, pumping my physical damage negation to around 40%, making it a very robust warrior. You could switch this for other talismans if you want to play with less protection. If you use the Bolt of Grand Sex or the Dragon's King Crackblade, you will want to incorporate the Godfrey icon to maximize the charge damage of both weapon skills. The armor I'm using here is the Radan set that grants high poise and protection, combined with the skeletal mask for maximum drip as a charged spectre. But you can use anything you like as long as you keep medium rolling. The flask of wondrous physics uses a lightning shrouding crack tier for an additional 20% lightning damage and either a damage negation like the opaline heart tier or a heal over time with the crimson burst crystal tier to uphold the ritual sword talisman buff. I really enjoy the playstyle of this build, having strong abilities at every range, powerful gap closer and stylish combat moves. All easily available with just one weapon switch. No sorting through spells or buffing up, while also being super flexible with additional weapon choices and not locked into repetitive options throughout a playthrough. If some specific enemies annoy you, just slap on the boat of Grandsex, kill everything from across the horizon and call it a day. I don't make builds for these truly overpowered weapons like Blasphemous Blade or this Sniper Spear, but it's nice to have them as a fallback option if everything else fails or to simply have some extra fun. What do you think about this build and what themes would you like to have covered in the future? Let me know in the comments. That's all for now about Elden Ring. Take good care of yourself and enjoy your gaming sessions.